Hello and welcome back to another episode here at Scriptcase by Jamie. And guess what we're going to do today? We have Project Day. And we are going to continue with our customer client project management platform. And as I had said before, there were a few things I wanted to change. So let's have a look at those and make a start or continuation on this project, shall we? Okay, so you see here I am already logged into our project. I have here the script case environment open and I have here my initial applications. Now before I start, I want to first of all show you the changes that I had made to the database. So we have here the project one database and we have here the clients table and within the clients table, I have added the owner field. Okay, so that we can specify who the owner is of a specific client and that way when that person logs in only they will be able to see their clients makes sense right and then we also have the same field added over here to the companies and you may notice that i have added a load more companies as well as clients in here and also associations between the two Okay, so if i come here into our platform now we have here for instance our clients list and you see, we now have a load of clients in here. And for our companies also, a load more companies in here. And of course, well, we may not entirely really like the view that we're having right now for these certain datas, let's say. So we will be creating one or two extra views for this application, as well as, you know, continuing on making some of the other changes that I had wanted to to make before finishing up with this project or this part of the project so that then we can basically reuse it. Now there is still a lot to go because there's all the email functionality I'm wanting to add there and well it will be more than likely including a few nice features there. So make sure you subscribe to the videos to know when of course the latest version or latest edition of the project is out. And of course, if you want to go ahead and download it, you can join the membership over here at Scriptcase by Jamie. And well, it's not testing actually, because that's where it's being redeveloped right now. So it is scriptcasebyjamie.com. And there you can, of course, spin the wheel, try and join the competition and get a discount on the membership if you wanted. Or of course, hang fire for Christmas, New Year, because there I will be adding and removing and changing and there is a lot to come okay so be aware of that so maybe right now is the best time to jump on while you know it is what it is otherwise let's continue with our project so with the database as i was saying i had also updated here our log so we have some log data in here now as well as added some more templates in here and of course we can see those also here in our email log application so that's essentially what our log would look like and there we also have then our templates okay so all of these are in there and of course we could go ahead and then also use here the email functionality and then choose a specific template now and that is then directly imported in here and then we just need to say who we want to send that to and of course we may want to add here an email from a client and in that case we just need to choose that client from here our clients grid and then again just choose the template that we want to apply and that will insert that for us so here on the email form i did still want to make one change because when we remove the email type maybe it's a good idea to actually empty all of the fields so we may still do that but for now we want to make sure that we deal with our new fields there first of all that we had added into the clients table so i'm going to go ahead and open up here the free client applications that we had created previously and what i want to do then is first of all come here to the grid sql and in here after the add date I had added the owner field, so I'll just add that in there and add the comma, save that, and that will then be updated. 
And then here that is also now available here within the grid view if I want. Okay, so I'll save that. I can close the application now because we're done with the grid now for now. And for the form, I need to come down here to application and then synchronize table. And there we can already see the new field that has been added into the database. And we can see here fields that will be created if I now confirm. Okay, so I can synchronize the table as long as I don't click here the confirm button, it will not synchronize the new field. Okay, so I'll click confirm and with that I have now the owner field and if I open up here the fields on the left, we have there now also the owner field. Okay, so I'll come here to edit fields and I don't actually want that in view, but I do want to place in here a defined value and that would then essentially be the user login. Okay, so of course the application is now gonna ask for that all the time and well, maybe that is not going to be available. So in fact, I will remove it for now and we will need to add that into the application later on. And with that, I will also remove the defined value, okay? Because if I leave it in there now, the grid will request it and or require it, or should I say re the reverse, the form will require it and the, for the grid will not actually send it. So you could end up some, with some errors there. Uh, so for now, we'll just leave it as it is. The field is in there and that means we can then of course use it. And the same goes here for our client view. And I'll just drag that out of our view there also. <laughs> okay, so I can close that one. And now I'll come here to companies. And here for the companies, well, I had a few extra grids here. I'm going to add it to all of them anyway, just so that they all have that field. And then, you know, we can always adjust it later. So we have here our company clients inc. So this is nothing to do with that. So we'll close that one. We will come back to that, however because there we will be wanting to create a different type of view. So I'll close this for now. And we have here our grid companies, SQL. And again here after add date, add here the owner field, comma, save that. And then of course I can run the grid application as well. And I can see then that the owner field, well, it's not been added because it's down at the bottom here. It's not shown, but essentially it's there. Okay, and it's saved. So that's great. We can save that and close that. And then here for the company view, again, we need to synchronize the table. And then again, we'll remove it out of view because here it does place it in view. And then also here for the form companies, confirm that. Okay, and again, remove it from view. Okay, so just like that, we have now added an owner field to our tables and of course well it was quite easy to do we've just updated the applications and synchronized everything as well so i'll just generate those applications as well so that we don't have any applications out outdated okay and that when i go ahead and run one of these other applications i still receive the latest version so if i come here to the menu for instance and run the menu now when i run any of the applications even though it was outdated before now it no longer is so now we will have all of our information and in, in here and we can see that we have a little more data of course the images haven't added those i just added the placeholders uh for now and otherwise the data itself for the names or relationships of course i thought was more important okay so we have here our client view this is our client view no in fact that was our company view and yes for me this is kind of feeling a little full right now and i'm not really a big fan and the same actually goes here for the client's view now this is okay but at the same time i would much prefer to have the active up top and the inactive below or not display the inactive at all and then we can actually maybe change this so we uh, select the active and then select inactive and add that actually here into the menu so we have inactive clients and active clients so in fact let's go ahead and do that so if i come here to my menu and i have here my lang menu clients and this is my grid clients that it then opens and what i then need to do is i need to duplicate this so i'm just going to add another one save okay you want to always make sure you save okay because the menu is awful. Sorry, sorry, Nemec, but it is awful. 
And I'll save again because I really don't want to be losing anything here. And I'm going to play, paste that in there, save that again, and come back to the menus. Here I have the grid clients. Now we'll also go to the grid clients. <coughs> okay, so. <coughs> Okay, so right now we have clients, so let's say active clients. And of course we could go and add that into the language variables and save that, but we can do that at another time. Okay, and here we'll say inactive clients. Okay, we'll save that. Now we're coming here to our link grid underscore clients. Okay, so we have then here both of these as grid clients. And if I go ahead and run that, they will now both essentially open the same application. Now we could go ahead now and create another application and have a completely different view for our active or inactive clients. Maybe that's an idea because maybe for the inactive clients, you just want to know some basic details, really. You don't need to know all the area, zip country, and so forth. You don't need the email functionality, really, or, well, some other features, maybe. Um, and then, of course, for the active clients, well, here I would imagine that you would want to have these features. Now, I don't know, really, how to best do this so I'm just going to go ahead and keep it as active and inactive clients because there's so many different ways that we can actually apply here so with that I'll save the menu again because again I really don't want to be killing anything here so I add another item save and then here this one I will now call clients save that and of course I could of just use there the language variable move that one up and then move these two out save that and now we have clients with a drop menu, okay? And I believe one of these did not have the font awesome icon, so I will add that in here. And we could, of course, change the icon here. So let's add the transparent one there and remove here the user tie and have that icon there. So we have active and inactive. And then that looks already very different. And we could, of course, change the color there also. So here the hover color, I'll change that to here the green. Okay, and that was of course a tractor going past me right now. We have all the guys doing the fields at the moment. It's that time of year. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that, we now have the hover effect for these two icons, green and then in orange. So active and inactive icons. And then we have here our companies. Now we will come to deal with those. So no stress for now, we just have here the menu so that we know we're going to create another view there. Now we have here our companies. Now what I want to also do is add another menu option and I'll save quickly and drag that one up here and place that one at the top here actually. This one I will call companies. Okay, and I know we have companies there already and see what it just gone and done. It had not saved that there. So hopefully it hasn't killed anything else. Companies. Okay, so that's good. Let me adjust that one or nudge that one to the right. So now that's going to be inside of there. And of course we have there the hover icon color. And what I want to do in here is then add another item. And that is going to be here, the company clients. Okay, so we have our client list, we have then also our active and inactive clients, and then we have our companies, as well as our company clients. Okay, so I'll save that. And then what I want to do then is actually create a new grid for this because the grid that we have is actually not really suitable. And the best way to do that now is really I'm just going to come in here to the SQL builder. And I'll choose here the company's clients as well as then clients and companies or companies and then clients and then confirm that. And then here I will add then the ID companies underscore clients ID from the company's clients table and then the ID companies 
uh, the owner, company name, country, email, support, logo, and active status, and place those in there. And then I will use here the ID clients, owner, company name, country, active. Let's place those in there as well. So I have here some aliases defined, CC for company clients, CP for companies, and CL for clients. I'll confirm that. And then for the joins, I just join them here to the companies table, which is then the ID that we have placed in here. So left join both of those companies and the clients, confirm that. And then we just need to assign here the ID companies, ID companies, ID clients and ID clients, confirm that. And we can run that to check it out. And then we can see, of course, that we have here a view basically of all clients that are associated with a company. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. And then here in my uh, project database here in my PHP, my admin, I'll come here to SQL. And if I run that, if I then go, Okay, so we don't have no ID up here, but really we want to maybe differentiate here the difference between the owners and the active status. So let's come back here to our SQL. And in here, if I then create a view, view companies, clients as, and then we're going to create our select again. And then note that here, I've changed the owner as client owner and active as company active. And then the same here for the client active and up here as company owner. Okay, so note those. And of course we have our joins there. Now I will remove the enable foreign key checks and click go. And that will then create me here a nice new view. Okay, so with that, I can then come back into script case here. And let's generate then a new view for that or a new application. So I go new application grid and refresh the database table. And then in here, we choose then the view that we have. And I will just go create for now. And we can go run. And then that has now then gone ahead and created a whole new table for us for all of the company clients. So I will very quickly just go ahead and remove some of these features that we have here, or the modules, should I say. And of course, in, make sure we have 100%. Come to our settings, set the vertical alignment to the top. And with that, well, we pretty much just need to apply or remove, should I say here, the header. Save that. And let's check here then our fields. Okay, so we have the ID clients. Let's remove a load of these. We don't really need them in view. We may just want to really see them. So we can see here, add here the logo. I think that's a good thing to add. We can remove the company logo. The company name can stay. The company email can remain here in the background because basically we can use these then as extra you know, action bar buttons maybe so we can you know, access those details faster or perform certain actions. So, okay, then we have here our client name. So wherever our client name is, client name, and then the client country, the client is active, and the owner. So let's place the owner over here to, well, actually, let's just remove the owner. And I think that is pretty much okay already, right? So if I run that now, we have then our logo, our name, our country, the company name, let's actually remove, place the company name over here next to, okay, next to the company logo. So company logo, company name, client name, client country, and active. Okay, so we can then quickly, of course, make some adjustments here. So for the active, we will remove that one again. And of course, we can go ahead and add one button that will, of course, well, change the status of that client, of course, right? So yes, we will want to add another action bar button in here. So I'll create a new button. I'll give it an Ajax button. And then here we want then the status. Let's just leave it a status, save. And we will have two states. That's active. 
and inactive. And then we can add here our icons in here, whichever ones you want to go for. I'll just go here for the exclamation mark again. And let's go with that one. Should be really the other way around, right? Okay, so let's go the other way around. Like so. And then here we will have green. Now, ideally, of course, you should have your color patterns. I have not been doing that I should have them on my side which I do not right now so yes we may want to adjust those later so for now I click save button and save again so that we just have our button placed there there we go okay so what else we want to do we want to also adjust here our fields so we have here our country so that would essentially be a select field so we want to actually change that here within the fields and add here the lookup so that we have then the company name or country name there. And of course, that is a manual lookup. So let's apply here the country's definitions. OK, save that. Our logo. And here we want to change the data type then to um, HTML image. Save. And there we want to change the data type here to an image database, I believe it was. Or it was file name, wasn't it, that we had? So let's go image file name, save. And we will want to copy some of those elements from our other applications here. So for our grid companies, what did we have for the logo? We had here the path company with the ID of the company. So we want to make sure we have that in here also. OK, and that is then applied there. And we had also the 250 image height and width applied there also. So we apply those two. And just like that, we have pretty much the same layout as what we had here within our other application. OK, so there we have then the country displayed, our company name. Let's increase the size here of the client name. So I will change here the display settings for that. And we want the client name to actually be bold, right? So let's bold that text and maybe increase. Well, let's not increase the font size. Let's just bold the text, run that. And there we have then the client name bolded, the company name here to the left, and then the logo, the country, and then the active or inactive status, you could say. Okay. Um, of course, in this view, I would then more than likely add other features and functionalities depending on what the end result of this platform. Okay, so now that we have done that, we can go ahead now and close here our grid companies. We want to add this view here to our list. And that is then here, grid underscore view underscore companies underscore clients. Okay, let's save that. Now let's go ahead and run that again. And now we have here companies and company clients. OK, we have then our active and inactive, which we still want to adjust. So, OK, for our clients, we come here into our grid clients. I'm still debating, actually, whether I want to create two separate views for this instead. Because we can use the select or adjust the select dynamically which is one of the core features we have in script case all of those macros right and with one of those you can just dynamically choose what we want to have displayed here and with that i'm going to go ahead and create a copy of our grid clients so grid clients and then here we're going to say active. OK, and then the good clients will remain our inactive. So let me rename that one just so we have that there. Also grid clients inactive. OK, and note. And note, of course, that when we make a change to an application name, script case generally finds all of those other applications. Now, if you have this application in code, you will still need to go and change that.
So I will rename the links automatically as well as gener regenerate the source code. So it's going to regenerate the menu for me. And there we have one of those beautiful error messages. And here I have also an error message on this grid, which is nice. Okay, that wasn't very nice. Okay, so grid clients is gone. So let me come back into menu. It's more than likely because the menu was open. And let me see here, clients active, grid clients inactive, grid clients inactive. See there, it did not make any change whatsoever. And that's really what that error message for was for. So grid clients active and inactive. There we go. So if I save that, now if I run, we have two separate applications. And of course, those two applications are here. So let me go ahead edit those and we want to change the select and as well as make some adjustments to here the inactive grid because really we don't need to have all of this data maybe keep the country we'll get rid of the area that the email can stay i guess and the name and then we'll leave it like that um and then come here to sql where active equals one in fact it was zero okay so i'll save that run and there we now have all our uh, all of our inactive clients and then here on this one we'll say where active equals one equals one run that one okay and now we only have here our active clients and already we have a different view for both of those because we're missing some of the details here from the inactive list and again we could remove here the email or remove the edit functionality in fact we could remove the edit functionality i don't really think it would be needed for an inactive client right you would only edit them if they were active so that is something we could remove there if you think we should remove it you know, comment let me know in the comments. I don't think so. I don't think it really matters. And of course, as many of you already know, it's really just a click away. Okay, so run. Here we have our companies now, our company clients. We have here our active clients as well as our inactive clients. We have our email, our email logs, which actually looks fine. I think we don't really need to do much else here. Maybe here the detail uh, remove that and adjust that but in general I do not like the detail application or detail module should I say it's pretty darn ugly and it's very limited in the configuration so you know I think I'll just leave it for that but not apply it anywhere else then we have here our email templates and well here for our email we still wanted to make some adjustments to this right and really what I'm wanting to do here, so let's make a couple minor ones here. First of all, let's come here to our email. And then we have here our email templates and our fields and the subject. Well, this needs to be bold. That really needs to be bold when we view that. Okay, so now if I F5 and then click on templates, it's not generated it yet. No, it's not updating my, let me double check here, email subject, bold text, it's bolded. Okay, so let me run. It's not bolding the text here, so let's refresh again. There we go, just took a refresh, a couple of refreshes sometimes. Okay, so with that, we have that bolded. I wanted to actually check the bolding on some of the other elements as well, because you know, I think they're pretty much done. And here for the companies, I'm still debating whether I make one other change here. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So here for our grid companies, what I'm going to do on this grid, we have here the active and inactive status. I don't want to create another grid and I don't really want to use add a separate menu item for this so we have here the refined search and that's what we're going to use so we can use here the select companies uh, select fields and there well i want to add the owner field but um i'll add the company name and i will add the country the area and the status 
Okay, I'll save that. And then come here to edit fields. In fact, company name maybe probably isn't such a good choice. So let's remove that one, save, come back to edit fields. Now here for the country, we, well, we want to leave that one closed, I think. Let's have that as no. And company area, we can have that as open. Those are multi-selects. That's not a range. So if it was a range, we could check that box there. And we don't want to do that. So I'll save that. And don't forget that on each of these, there is also these pens here. So we can click those and then make sure that, you know, we make any other adjustments here. So here we want to add a label for the value one, which is active. Or just yes, actually, we can just say yes. Insert and no. Let's caps that also. And that is then zero. Insert that. And I'll save that then. Okay, so that field now will display yes or no for the active status. The area code should be fine. The country should also be fine. Let's save those and run the application. And now we have here on the left hand side a nice refined search where we can actually choose here maybe an area where they are or just the country or just their status, however you please. And that is then also displayed at the top here, like so. Okay, so I think that is for sure much better. Maybe even make a slight adjustments here to these fields. So I would like to actually display them in a different order. Um, so let's come here to settings. And well, yes, there is no option there to change the order of these is that oh yes we can just drag and drop okay okay so to change the order of these we just really need to drag and drop them so i'll move country to the bottom active to the top and then area in the middle save that and then run the application again and now we have the active status at the top, then the area, and then the country, like so, okay? So by default, if I refresh again, the active and area is open, and we can then just simply say yes or no, or choose an area, or of course, select multiple options that we want. So just like that, then we can then see you know, the companies as well as then a short list of their client that, you know, the company clients that are associated to them here within this one list. And of course, we could change this to have, you know, a multitude of views. In fact, we could probably re recreate this grid probably around another five to 10 times and have completely different views for that. It really just depends on, well, the day, the weather, uh, what you're wanting to view, what you're going to use this application for, and more. And one of the great things about script case is, well, not only is it easy and fast enough to get things done, but you can always go back, copy, replicate, duplicate, and more. Okay, so it really does make your life very easy. So I think that is just about it. Let's go ahead and generate all of our applications. And then with that, let's then run here our menu application and see where we are at today. Okay, so we have here our companies. Now I want to add there an icon there. So at least then the menu is looking pretty complete. And yes, I think next time we want to go ahead and maybe update also all of these language variables, right? Because that is one of the things about using language variables. Once you start using them, Ideally, you want to keep using them. Otherwise, you could end up with what we have going on here now already. A bit of a mishmash. <laughs> um, and it can become very messy. Okay, And of course, as you go on then later, you're expecting to have language variables there with language keys. And you can just change. And, and well, somebody didn't update the menu. That's not good, is it? So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and add a font awesome icon in here for our company clients. So here I will then add then the business user icon that we had there previously for the clients list, wherever it is. I did see it there before and now I don't. 
There it is at the bottom. Okay, so with that, let's add here maybe a client uh, hint as well. Company client hint. View a list of company clients. And of course, always with the typos. Save that. And here we have them for our clients. We could add further hints to these. We added that for the settings and everything already. But I think we'll come back to the menu in another video. And for sure, add a few more options in here. Maybe even add or update the rest of the language variables and keys that we have there. Or maybe even entirely remove them. We'll see. But ideally, we want to really, in the next two to three videos, I will say, I'm say two to three, because of the email functionality that we're going to have going on here. Okay, so there is a little secret there. Oh, we see what happened there. Look at that. It changed one of the email settings here to companies. See, did anybody notice that? That is what happens with this I was going to swear then, but I yes, I'm not going to. This is what happens with this damn menu. Okay? Because, of course, we had here for sure a language key already for our menu email settings, right? So let's go menu and then go underscore email. Yeah, it's not popping up. And I don't know if it will be. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. So I will just add in email settings in there right now. And, of course, we will have to check that later. And, of course, we did also have our email settings application there as form email settings. So let's make sure that is updated again. Thank you very much for that new menu script case. I really do hope it is going to be coming soon because this thing is a nightmare. And if you agree with me, go on, add your comments. You're probably going to give me more comments on that than anything else in any of my other videos because, of course, <laughs> no, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'll let you do that in the comments. Okay, so please do and hopefully... <laughs> hopefully we'll have something done about that because yeah it's about blimmin time no okay so there we go with our icons updated at least our menu now looks nice we have the email settings let's just very quickly add that one in there as well because that was the cogs not cog and Okay, there we go. So the menu's done, okay? Other than the language keys, which we can worry about later, I think I think we will we'll make one more change, but I'm going to leave that for the next video when we then tackle here the email setup because, yes, I have... Because, yes, I really do want to configure this for any sort of platform. So I ideally, I use Sendfox. A client uses SendGrid. We just created one on Mandrill. So I have all three of those pretty much ready to go. It's just a case of adjusting the scripts so that they fit in line with what we've got here, that they all will work together. And then, of course, making that choice. So we will have to create that process or that, those steps, of course, where we will choose which email platform we are going to use. And then we will have those relevant settings here within our settings application. And then the email will use those settings that we have chosen to use throughout the application. Okay, so that is it for this video. And I, I gave away a little much there. I didn't want to tell you all of that. But it seems like I have. And well, it gives you something to look forward to because I hope... I managed to do it in the next few videos or the next couple of weeks because there are a few videos in between to come because somehow I've managed to create some and fit some in, in, in the time that I have. And yes, as you see, I'm still working on this key cloak project. Oh my God. Okay, but yes, it's been fun. It has been fun. Okay, so off we go anyway. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video and be sure to check back for the continuation of this project where we will finalize the email functionality over the next few videos. And of course, finish up this project before the end of the year so that next year, we can basically 
import this into one or two different projects that we want to use and straight away there have email functionality maybe report sending you know client and customer management and those sort of things why don't you give me some ideas let me know in the comments what you think we should be creating with this project once it's finished okay so of course ideally we take this and we reuse it somewhere. So think of where the company's client's aspect comes in or even the email sending and so forth with what we haven't done yet, of course, because there are still, as I said, a few videos to go. But until then, until then, ladies and gentlemen, so I hope you have enjoyed and, well, stay safe, stay well, and of course, keep scripting away in Scriptcase. <laughs> until the next video. <laughs>